I mean, think about it, right? Do you have to remind yourself to blink? Like, imagine you're having a conversation, and once that bro, my eyes are dry, and I'm going to blink a couple of times. Then you go back to the conversation. No, it's, it's automatically programmed. You have to remind yourself to breathe. Like, all these things that we take for granted, these are gifts that were given to us, and we never asked for them, and we never deserved them in the first place, right? So it goes without saying that we should be grateful. I mean, if I give you an analogy of a guy, and, you know, his parents, they raised him, and they did everything for him, right? They clothed him. The father was working two jobs. The mom, she sacrificed her beauty when she gave birth. She kind of, you know, she lost her figure and all these things. And she gave all of her time to raising this one son. They put him through university. But then suddenly he grows up, and then, you know, he just comes back to the mom and dad and says, you know what, I'm not going to holler at you no more. I'm not going to call you. I'm going to go off and do my own thing. I might call you if I want to, but generally speaking, I don't really have anything to do with you no more. Have a good day, mom. And this mom and this dad did everything for this child. Now, I have a question for you very quickly. So, work with me. How would you describe this individual? Ungrateful. What are some adjectives? Ungrateful. Ungrateful, right? Okay, what are the adjectives? The person who turned his back on his mom and dad. What would you say to him? Selfish. Selfish. What else? Disrespectful. Disrespectful. And we can go on like that, right? No one's going to say this guy's a good guy. But my question to you is, then what do we say about the one who turned his back on the one who gave him the parents in the first place? The one who gave him his own life in the first place? If we say that a person who turned his back on his parents is ungrateful and a person who turned his back on his parents is selfish and disrespectful then what about the one who turned his back on the one who gave him life in the first place? That's why we say that a person who turned his back on Allah like in the Arabic word for a disbeliever or a person who doesn't believe in Allah is, is kafir. Kafir means someone who, who covered the blessings of God, someone who is ungrateful in other words. So Islam is about gratitude. It's a two-way relationship. Allah gives us and He gives us when we didn't ask and we didn't deserve. And all He wants for us is to recognize Him in His oneness and just pray to Him in the minimum way at least that He asked us to. And through that process, we're grateful to Him. And in return, He will give us paradise for eternity, ecstasy, where you can do whatever you want, with all the liquor you want to drink, with all the women you want to dance around with. Just have fun with, with your family forever. But then for those who couldn't show even a little bit of gratitude, a little bit of gratitude, just recognizing their Creator as one, then for them, Allah has a very, very, very serious threat for them on the Day of Judgment. A tormenting punishment for which they will not come out of. But you would appreciate, you would appreciate when the rights of a human being are transgressed and say, yeah, that person who slapped his mum in the face, he's an evil character, right? We'd even be ready to punch him up or throw him in jail. But when the rights of Allah, the King of the heavens and the earth, are transgressed, we're like, <laughs> we get upset, punishment's being spoken about. At the end of the day, right? We're, cre we're creations and we're subservient beings and when we hear things like that we should be willing to accept the final point that I just want to address is that although Allah is our creator and he asks us to have a relationship with him he asks us to have a relationship with him through his prophets Allah set down prophets through the ages because we can't get to know our king unless there is some kind of a viceroy some kind of a messenger who connects us to our creator because if God came down to every person, or if rather God revealed himself to every person, we have some serious problems. Because you got people like George W. Bush, who said, God told me to go into Iraq, right? And then he stored like 150,000 people, right? Then you got people like Jack the Ripper, who said, you know, God told me to murder all these women and slice them up into pieces and rape them. So how would you measure what God's really saying, what, what God's really not saying? You have to send out one objective source of revelation to one person that is unanimously accepted in the community. So, for example, initially God had sent down Abraham and to him God revealed his messages and his miracles and his signs to communicate to the people. Then he sent down Moses, then he sent down David and then he sent down Jesus, right? The point that I want to come to is that the, the final messenger that Allah had sent down to all of us 
was the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Now, we have to follow this man. And I just want to, I want to kind of specifically address the Muslims for a second. I really want you to think about something, my brothers. Really ponder upon something, okay? Allah tells in the Quran that the believers, the real Muslims, the believers are those when Allah and His Messenger sends forth a ruling or a command or a judgment, they say we hear and we obey. They say we listen and we obey. But then Allah said in another part of the Quran that when the Prophet calls them, i.e. the hypocrites, they turn away, they listen, it goes through one ear and out the other. And you don't see any of the Prophet's rulings or teachings in these people's lives. So my question to you is, Allah described to us the characteristic of a believer and a characteristic of a hypocrite. And the hypocrites we know are those who will be in the lowest part of the hellfire. So my question to you is, you have to ask yourself, when you hear the Prophet said this, or Allah said do this, or the Prophet said don't do this, and Allah said don't do this, do you obey? Because if you do, you have Iman, you have the characteristics of a believer, of an inhabitant of paradise. But if when the Prophet's commands and teachings come your way, and you don't implement them in your life, then are you taking the characteristic of those who are going to be in the lowest part of the hellfire? And that's for you to think about in retrospect. We always think it's going to be hard. People think it's going to be hard to come to Islam. It's going to be hard to commit to praying five times a day. It's going to be hard to, you know, not do uh, sinful things with women uh, and go drinking and clubbing. People think it's hard to obey your parents. I'm saying just try it. Give in to Allah, submit. Because that's how Allah created you. He created you with the need to submit to something higher than you. That's why as human beings, we always submit to something higher. Whether it be our girlfriend, whether it be our job, or whether it be a sport like football. We're always gonna have something above us. So we're created like that. And when you have something above you, and that one thing is Allah, He has the power to make it easy for you. So when you're here today, know that you're doing two things, like I said at the beginning. You're out here having a good time, but you're also worshiping Him, which is why you were created. The reason why I say you're worshiping Him is because number one, this is an act of brotherhood. And brotherhood is an act of worship, as Allah tells us in the Quran. But also, we came together today to do this event to raise money for people who are suffering in other parts of the world. And we know that charity is one of the pillars of Islam. One of the five pillars. It's one of the central components of this religion. And although this charity is not zakat, it's sadaqah, it's still an act of worship. So I want you to really go out there today with that mentality, right? You're having a good time, but you're also worshipping Allah. And carry that out even after the game in the rest of your lives. I'm sorry, I hope I didn't go on too, too long, okay? But anyways, you don't have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for listening to me, okay? I love you all for the sake of Allah. Assalamu alaikum.